Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. It's Friday, August 11th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The National 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline has been in place for roughly a year. For those who staff the call centers, the work is challenging and rewarding. And I hear that emotion. I hear somebody crying. And after we talk and we work through the call, there are times that we get off the phone and we're both smiling. We'll hear from two employees of the largest 988 call center in Illinois in just a few minutes. Drought conditions in Missouri and Illinois are improving thanks to recent consistent rain. But St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports the majority of the region is still dry. Over the past two weeks, many parts of Missouri and Illinois have been blanketed with gentle rains that soaked into the ground. Illinois state climatologist Trent Ford says that's good news for both states. There's still drought in the region. Some of it is still severe to extreme, but as far as Soil conditions are concerned, stream flow conditions are concerned, crop conditions are concerned. Things have improved quite a bit just since the beginning or the middle part of July. Ford says the recent rain is helping improve the quality of corn and soybean crops in Missouri and Illinois ahead of the harvest later this year. He says parts of the upper Midwest weren't as lucky when it came to the rain, which could still mean low flow conditions on the Mississippi River later this year. I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. A judge has ruled 16 St. Louis sheriff's deputies were improperly hired. The Post-Dispatch reports they can't wear a badge until most of the city's judges sign off on the appointments. State law requires that approval. Sheriff Vernon Betts hired the 16 courthouse deputies to make up for recent departures. The newspaper reports a personnel committee will likely meet next week to review applications and conduct interviews. After a shooting in downtown St. Louis a couple of months ago left one teen dead and 11 others injured, Mayor Teixeira Jones's administration started offering more for teens to do on summer evenings. St. Louis Public Radio's Rachel Lippman has more on whether residents have noticed a difference. The administration extended Friday and Saturday hours at two city-owned recreation centers, one in North City, one in South City. It also set up a teen zone in downtown to give kids who came to the neighborhood things to do. Dan Pister has lived in downtown for 16 years and chairs the safety committee for its neighborhood association. He says the past weekends have felt calmer, but the city needs to mix in some sticks with the carrots. I know a lot of downtown residents would like to see enforcement or, you know, some of the parents that bring their kids downtown. Uh, they like to see the curfews enforced. Pister is also criticizing the city for promoting an August 5th event that drew as many as 400 teens to the neighborhood, calling it counterproductive. I'm Rachel Lippman. St. Louis Public Radio. Medicaid patients who called Missouri's helpline in May had to wait an average of 48 minutes to talk to someone. That statistic is from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Missouri Foundation for Health Vice President Sheldon Wisegrove says call center wait times measure how well a state meets patient needs. And if your Medicaid eligibility hinges on your ability to understand what you need to submit, and you can't get through to a person who can explain that to you. That's a real problem. Missouri officials say the federal organization is looking at all calls, not just Medicaid inquiries, and that is skewing the data. The federal agency sent letters this week to states reviewing how they determine who is eligible for Medicaid. Missouri is beginning to disenroll people after keeping them on the rolls during the pandemic. Family Care Health Center in St. Louis has received an award from the Department of Agriculture for supporting breastfeeding mothers. The Carondelet Clinic provides education to women, infants, and children, or WIC mothers, who struggle with breastfeeding. Erin O'Reilly, a leader for the St. Louis Leche League, says women and children who breastfeed are more likely to stay healthy. Breastfeeding is such an important public health tool. It affects short-term illness. It affects long-term illnesses by decreasing both of those. The clinic serves low-income mothers who are statistically unlikely to breastfeed because they can't afford to take time off work. Some of the best pickleball players in the nation are in St. Louis this week for a tournament at Forest Park. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports it's another sign of the sport's growing popularity in the region. The paddle and ball game played on a court smaller than a tennis court is often recreational, 
but it's intense for the professionals playing in the SunMed St. Louis Open. Mike Chapin is a pickleball instructor and runs stlouispickleball.com. He says the sport has come a long way in the St. Louis area. We had one pickleball court back in 2014-15, uh, and now we just uh, were recently notarized by lawninlove.com as the sixth biggest pickleball community uh, in the United States. Chapin says several more courts are slated to open in the St. Louis area this year. The SunMed Open continues through this weekend in Forest Park. I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. The National 988 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline has been in place for a little more than a year. The central Illinois city of Bloomington is home to the biggest 988 call center in the state. Reporter Melissa Ellen spoke to two people who work for the 24-hour call center about what it's like counseling people who are pleading for help for themselves or for a loved one. A warning, this story talks about suicide. Sometimes I answer the phone and the first thing I hear is, I'm suicidal. This is crisis counselor Susan Rush. She is referring to her phone at PATH's 988 call center, where she's been working almost a year. PATH is the largest 988 call center in the state. At PATH, Rush and about 75 other crisis counselors talk to people facing a mental health concern. This includes a parent or a loved one of someone with a mental health concern, or someone who is having a crisis themselves. She started around the time 988, the National Emergency Mental Health Line, was implemented throughout the country in July 2022. We want them to know that you know, we can help them through these things. They can be open and honest with us, and we're going to do our best to make sure that we get them in a better place. Rush says a lot of the time people don't realize their value. Just in the glimpse that I talk to somebody, I see the good, and I wish that there was a way that people could see that. And I think it's just painful to see that somebody is struggling to to see their strengths. PATH's Assistant Director of Call Center Operations, Adam Carter, says on average, they get about 9,000 calls per month and about 500 chat messages and texts. The average speed PATH answers a call is 20 to 25 seconds. Carter says it's not uncommon for people who call to be in the process of dying by suicide. In a case like this, he says the crisis counselor can reach out to an emergency response team to take further action. Mostly, what 988 counselors do is listen. Not everyone needs mobile crisis. Not everyone needs um, emergency medical services. We, Our goal is to handle about 80% of our calls without connecting them with an emergency crisis team. Because we're able to de-escalate or get someone back to a pre-crisis state that frequently, if not higher. A crisis counselor's ability to jump into action may be limited. Susan Rush and Adam Carter say people at PATH have a wealth of resources they can provide. Unlike emergency first responders, PATH counselors can stay on the phone for an hour or longer. They can also call people back to check in. Carter says PATH is happy to follow up as quickly and frequently as necessary. This can be days later or even 15 minutes. It is not bothersome. It is not something that we begrudge. We just want to make sure folks have access to those services. A complication in the National 988 system is call routing. Currently, 988 routes calls based on the area code of the phone number the person is using to make the call. So a person calling with a Bloomington phone number living in New York City may be connected to PATH. This is a known flaw in the system. Rush says there are ways to work around this. Crisis counselors can look up resources by zip code. They can also try to transfer the person to a call center near them. Rush says another handy feature is the ability to text someone about nearby resources. Carter says the goal is to get people a response as close to home as possible. We're going to have someone there who can listen and can help support you through the process. Being a crisis counselor is not easy, though. Carter says there can be high turnover in the position. Rush says she's often asked how she does the job, but for her, it's rewarding. For me, I answer the phone and I hear, you know, I'm depressed, I'm suicidal. And I hear that emotion, I hear somebody crying. And after we talk and we work through the call, 
there are times that we get off the phone and we're both smiling. I'm Melissa Ellen. If you or a loved one is having suicidal thoughts, you can call or text 988. There's also the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.